Yes, yes, yes. Shalom, Chavarim. Shalom. Greetings. So, question here is, is God, the God of the Bible, and Satan, are they one and the same? Got to hear a presentation, I think it's Selah Shalom on the Sadneta. You know, he made some very interesting points. Some points we actually agree with, you know, from the Waspi and also from the Bible. They asked the question, is Satan an angel? He said, based on the Waspi, a Waspi, and some of his correspondences that he points to in the Bible in his presentation. It was a good presentation. I have to admit that. Good presentation. We got to catch the replay. You know, there were some interesting questions that we would have just wanted to ask. We're still trying to get more of a better grasp of the waspy. We have that. We downloaded that, checked out some of the history on that. Seems to have been inspired by a one, I forget the person's name, you know, that brought it forward, this waspy Bible. And it seems to be a, well, how do we call it? Um, from a Hebraic Judaic, it would be like a, um, I want to say a Haggadah, but it's, it's, it's like, you know, from reading, say, the Bible and you know, New Testament, Old Testament of the Bible, you know, we might write, you know, communicate. It's, it's an inspired, I see there's some inspiration there. And also how ones who, who promote it, and I say, Selah Shalom, he, he really seems to, you know, know it. If I ask him a question, he probably would know like where to go to give, you know, an answer or a response to it. So this is not so much debating or, you know, him directly. You know, because we didn't have the opportunity to catch the the podcast at the time. But there are a few things that have come up. I'm still kind of reflecting on. I said, let me just get into a little quick record right here and put forward the first main question. You can find the video out there. It's there. Check it out and support. So is is God like the God of the Bible, right? And 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 Satan or Satan, right? Are they one and the same? Now, many would tell you, let's, let's go over here and let's bring up some of these exhibits right here. We didn't go into any special exhibits, you know, but from what we have been led to believe concerning, you know, Satan. There was a good picture that saw used in the background. It was that one where they have like the so-called white Jesus res wrestling this kind of, um, you know, Satan, you know, this Satan figure, Satan. Now, often in literature... And in the Western Gentile tradition, this is where I get to know that the Waspi has some some important um, some important truths that it points out, you know, an important commentary. It's almost like a commentary on the Scripture, especially post New Testament, because we have to put things into perspective. I think that many of the points that Sila Shalom brought forward concerning the Bible and saying that the God of the Bible is false or bipolar or this or that and, and war and commanding this and that is somewhat anachronistic. Anachronistic is kind of out of time. We have to put things in its proper context. There was one particular verse that he quoted from the Book of Judgment that was interesting and I had to rewind it there where I think it was saying about the, the God of the, the Waspi Bible, which purports to be the true God, Right, saying that by offensive or defensive war. As when he said that there, it reminded me of something that His Majesty said, you know, even though Ethiopia fought, as one would say, a defensive war. I mean, what were they supposed to do? That was one of my main questions. So when we talk about this whole thing about war, right, about war, you know, it's like the whole thing about murder. And people say murder and kill, it's a semantic nuance. But it's a very important nuance when we start to look into the original languages and the context. We don't fully have that with the King James Version. We have, now the God of the Bible in the sense of the King James Version, we could easily say, well, yeah, God of the Bible, King James Version, Satan, especially the way we've seen it practice, preached and practice, especially over 400 plus years, we can definitely say it does seem like they are one and the same. So to that question, it's a matter of perspective, right? We're looking at the King James Version of the Bible mainly. Now, why do I say that? Because if we start to get into the Hebrew or we say, well, what is the language of the Waspi? Waspi is the English. Okay, we go that far and we get to study the history and we see that it was an inspired man. It seems like a person that revealed this, that wrote this. We saw some pictures out there still doing our research. We don't want to like put, you know, false information out there. Oh, we did like what the brother did say about practicing righteousness and doing righteousness and doing good and helping one. So let me ask this. 
is it ever right to defend? And people say, well, well, God can defend you. All right, let God defend you. Like this is what I mean by anachronistic. Anachronistic means like it's out of its proper time. Now, if we take the biblical narrative, since even the WASP is kind of based in the biblical narrative, but also exploring certain other, you know, cultures that are more known to us because of archaeology and, you know, research that has gone on in various different cultures. It reminds me of the Aquarian gospel, except I, I think a little bit more so the Aquarian gospel you know, you know, we, we, we like, you know, we are attracted to it because it seems to illuminate many of the points that we know, you know, based on the received text. When I say received text, people say, oh, you're talking about the white man. No, actually, even the white man admits that there were things that existed outside of his paradigm, outside of the culture that he knew. Right. And we get to find him in places all up in Africa and in Ethiopia and in Arabia, which is very much connected with Kush, you know, in different civilizations, ancient Egypt, you know, studying things. And it doesn't seem like he knows much about it. And even when his more honest scholars did point out some things, one thing that many of his honest scholars or the scholars that had moments of honesty, speaking about even Sir E.A. Wallace Budge, he points to Africa. He say, oh, I was, he was researching this. And what it's saying, this reminds him of something in Africa, the shaman, the so-called witch doctors or the spiritualists and what they would do. You know, the types of, um, some might call it magic or healing or spiritualism. He would compare it because what he's saying is that in ancient Egypt, it's very much connected with the African, we say black people. So even the culture, he can understand this ancient culture that's not really part of his culture. But then after he gets to understand it, then we see, as white people often do elsewhere, they'll claim it as their own. Recall even our musical forms, jazz, blues, rock and roll, so forth and so on. He'll claim these things. You know, I mean, even the songs of the of the of the enslaved, the enslaved black and brown men, women and children, you know, it will move him so much. And when he likes it, he'll claim that his own. So let's not go right there on this. Now, I know I'm just pointing out some things because there was a lot that was mentioned, a lot that was pointed to, and people will have to, you know, if we had the video, we can go through, okay, let's take this point right here. You know, perhaps we'll do that. We'll download it. You know, we don't want to get into all of that because it's, it's Sarnetta's video, so forth and so on, and don't want to kind of get all flagged up like that. But it would be important for us, Khabarim, you know, Talmudim, to do that, to study it. So we're not going to dismiss the WASPI because there is no, how can I say, the primary language seems to be English, right? And the whole context of when it was written, when it was put forward, is a kind of response to that which preceded it, you know, and gleaning and discerning, you know, from what preceded it, namely the Old Testament, New Testament, a, a better paradigm. You know, or a better paradigm in consideration of where humanity in all of its experiences has evolved. Now, the point about Satan in the Western Gentile world has been conceived to be an angel. One thing he didn't mention was that an angel basically is a messenger. See, when you take the term, these terms like angels, we look at it in the way it has been presented to us. Now, when we're studying the Hebrew and we're looking into the word angel, what does angel really mean and how it's been translated? You know, a messenger, one sent. One sent is, is a messenger, you know? Even we talk about these terms like Lord. Like Lord, this is a very King Jamesian translation. And you think about the Lords of England and, and the European, you know, Western Gentile history. And, and you're kind of locked into that paradigm. But what word does the Bible use? And in the context of the culture of the time, how were these words used? Because this gives us a more of a clarity. I zoom in on the word angel because in the popular paradigm in the Western Gentile world, you can't you know, persuade most ones that Satan was not an angel. Most ones believe Satan was an angel. Then Brother Selah Shalom, he went and he said um, about, about God, God being an angel. Right. He pointed to some verses that we have pointed to elsewhere. But the way he presented it, he presented his argument. But even as he talked about angels, he said even in the Acts of the Apostles quote, he said angels in the plural. 
right? And then he tries to make the point that that the God or the one that was in the mount with Moses was the angel. Now, now let's just actually go there for a moment because, you know, let's do some due diligence here. Like we like to get into the language and my brothers and sisters, you know, we have to get out of the English like, you know, get out of this English only thing because it's really corrupting our mentality and it keeps us in a kind of an intellectual slavery, right? When we're doing this research into other languages and linguistics, we have to get into, you know, we have to get into, hold on for a moment, we have to get into the linguistics. I mean, this is the real science. People talk about pseudoscience and real science. Imagine, you know, um, we go into so-called science, Right, but we're not good at math. We don't understand the periodic chart, and we're talking about we are scientists. You, you see what I'm saying? We might be talking about other people's scientific research and the results of it, and commenting on, you know, other people's peer review. But we ourselves don't have the wherewithal to really know the truth for ourselves. We're relying on like if another translator translates something, and I read the translation, and he said, "What do you think about it?" I say, "Hey, I, I love this. I, I get this. Yeah, this makes a lot of sense." Now, I really don't know whether he has faithfully translated that. You know, or, or what he might have inserted. He might have been faithful with the translation, but inserted some of his own ideas. This is what we perceived and picked up that Selah Shalom did when he brought out this verse to prove the point after he asked whether Satan was an angel and then whether the God or God of the Bible is an angel. And he went forward to, you could say, to prove. I think he proved it in a sense from the verses that he pointed to his argument, his reasoning. But then in going over these verses again and breaking down the argument, you know, and going at a pace, Acts 7.38, he, he brought this verse. This is he that was in the church. Now, the church, he said it wasn't called church. No, it wasn't called church, church. That's a translation. We look at the Hebrew. We, we, we can even decipher the, the Coptic, the Koine Greek, like the Coptic and the Koine Greek with the Hebrews, like... You see, when I start to talk about linguistic things, and I'm, it's easy, my brothers. There's many scholars that are not fluent in these languages, but they recognize the value, right, of studying the language. There's a there's an extreme limitation, and this satanic mentality connected with the Bible, right, that would make ones believe and make believe that the 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 true God of the Bible is Satan is because of the translation. It's because of what's lost in translation. It's also because of what the lost found black and brown people have gone through as well. Right? All that history, we can't ignore that. In other words, before a crime happens is not the same after a crime happens. So when we look at the big picture view, we're going to seek to address the big picture view, but going to zoom in on this. So the church here is the kahila, the kahal, the kahal. Kahal is the word that's used in the Hebrew. So it's consistent with the Hebrew idea of assembly coming together. Not church in the 400 year KJV, King James Version of the Bible context of church. Right? Not by that word sound church, but the kahal, the kahal, which is an assembly. So in the spirit of the language, it is one and the same concept that may be translated as it was translated here as a church. So it was in the assembly in the mead barn in the wilderness with the angel. We heard the brother speak and he said, with angels. He said, what is Moshe doing here? What is Moses doing here with angels? He was with angels. No, it says with the angel. But then he went forward to, from this verse right here, right, from this verse right here, to go to, I think, the one about dispensation, the dispensation of angels, right? The dispensation of angels. Let's go right here, dispensation of angels. This was the other, this was the other verse that he pointed out because we're only going to be able to maybe touch on a few points right here and, you know, to keep it, um, what's the disposition of angels, right? There we go, disposition. So this is Acts, right? This is Acts right here. So it says, who received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. Now, his context there was off because it's, it's speaking to the children of Yisrael who receives that. Who received the law? It was Moses. No, it wasn't Moses. It was through Moses that the children of Israel received HaTorah, 
right? We receive, we can say, the mother, ha Torah. We receive the mother, right? The Torah, right? Now, let's look at this verse here for a moment, and we're just going to keep this rolling right here. Disposition of angels, disposition of angels. And in the Hebrew, we see the same. Yes, it says disposition of angels, messengers, ascending and descending. Is that the Jacob's ladder? But what we have in the verse over here, it says you receive the law by decrees given by angels and you did not obey it. So what's going on here in this particular verse where Stephen is speaking to the Israelites, Stephen, one of the disciples of Robenu Yeshua, right, Yeshua Hanotri, Jesus of Nazareth, he is speaking to his fellow Israelites. You have to remember in this scene, after this scene right here, they basically kill him. They basically kill him, you know? They basically kill him. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. This is his fellow Israelites, but he being full of the, it says Holy Ghost here, the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, the, the set apart spirit, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of Ha Elohim, Ha Elohim, and Yeshua standing on the right hand of Ha Elohim. Even his idea concerning God, he goes to deity. But deity does not bring out what Elohim is in the Hebrew context. And even if one goes to the, when you said, he said Allah, Allah, the Allah aspect of it, right? Now, in the coin of Greek, we have Theos, right? Now, here's where the confusion comes in. Because in the Hebrew sense, right? In the Hebrew sense, for the Hebrews, Elohim is an operative word that means the power or the powers, right? Power or powers. It is the creator you know, the creator title, right? The powers as we have in Bereshis. And what's confusing, I think, to most of these ones and ones that they think they got it. And what they got is that they peep the confusion in the English and they hit the brick wall. They hit the brick wall in the English, you know, because the English brings certain concepts and ideas. All right, let's go to, let's go to what this verse is talking about right here. All right? Um, let's go with my angel. Let's see my angel right here. Because he says, he's saying that, well, it was not Yahweh, it was not Yahweh, Jehovah, that was with Moshe, but it was with, a, it was with an angel, right? An angel, right? Well, we're not saying that it was not an angel, but it was ha Malaak, right? It is the angel. What does angel mean here? Angel, the Malaak. What does Malaak mean? A, a messenger? A representative, a messenger, an angel, a theophanic angel, they say. This is the BDB Brown's Driver's Briggs, right? They say it's from a, a ancient unused root, no doubt Ethiopic, right? right? Meaning to dispatch as a deputy, right? Meaning to dispatch. The idea is to dispatch in the context is to dispatch as a as a deputy. Strong's definition here says an unused root, dispatch as a deputy messenger. Now, specifically, and what's it specifically in the use in the Old Testament scriptures and the Hebrew scriptures, right? The Brit Hayashana, right? Specifically of Elohim. Hmm. A messenger specifically of Elohim, speaking about the Elohim of Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, the Elohim of the Trinity, that is an angel. Also, note this right here. An angel is also a prophet, a priest, a teacher. So we have the man sense. He said, oh, it's man. It's not Yahweh. It's not Jehovah. It's a man. According to the Hebrew scripture in the beginning, right, Elohim said, let us make man, right? In our image after our likeness. And he created man in his image after his likeness. Male and female, he created them. So you have to over that right there, that man right has a his root his psycho spiritual root the spiritual the non-material aspect and then we have you know the the physical the five cycle the physical aspect so we have both the human nature right of the human being right but then human beings also in the very beginning had that divine nature he was correct with the whole choice right and the choice factor right the choice factor we did the 
couple of vids on like the free will, you know, in brief response, especially to our fellows on is there free will? Do we have free will? And yes, there is will. Right. As far as free will, we could put a question, strong question mark, but there is willpower. But everyone's will or willpower is not the same as everyone else's because people give their willpower to people, circumstance and situation. There's things that I will not or I will seek as strongly as I can not to do. Right. If I'm around my earthly, I might not speak in a certain way that I'll speak around my homie. Right. So that means that even though I might feel like saying it, I have enough willpower not to. Now, some of y'all, some of you, you know, you'll speak the same way. You know, you curse like a sailor around your homies. You curse like a sailor around, you know, your parents. And maybe they curse that way, too. So you're that 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 expression of the will is different because of your experience. So it's not like everybody has like the same measure of will. Right. That they have the same measure of will. For example, if one fears somebody or something, right, then they won't do certain things because of the fear of that person. While you have another person who doesn't fear that person or that thing, therefore their will, right, their will can be exercised in ways that that other person. So they both have the same potentiality, potential of will. That's some of the detail. But then in the in the in the penultimate of it, we brought in Timothy, where it speaks about how it says, "Per adventure, Elohim, perhaps Elohim will give them repentance." Now people have this idea that, well, how come Elohim, the Almighty, can't just send a spirit to make everybody good? They forget about the choice factor. According to the scripture, there was a choice factor in the very beginning. We're talking about the Garden of Eden, the Garden of Delights, the Garden of Eden, the Geneta Eden. In the Geneta Eden, there was a choice factor. Man was told, right? right? The man, according to Bereshi, Genesis chapter 2, was told not to eat of the tree, of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For in the day that you do it, according to King James Version, you shall surely die. Right. The Hebrew brings out more of the sense that almost like from that point forward, you're going to be dying the death, not just die. OK, you just dead. But no, you'll be dying to death. Isn't death a process? Even many ones when they get older, some of y'all's use who gets older, even some of the youngins getting a little older, you're experiencing changes. And there's a process when if you look at the big picture, it's like man is living. But, you know, from another perspective, you know, the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. From another perspective, man is dying. Right. He's dying. You know, for example, we see nature speaking for brethren about this. We see nature. We see creation, you know, regenerating. We see everything regenerating like in season, out of season. It's like man seems to have one season and he's gone. Where's that regenerative power? You know, where's that? Re I think even there's some 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 creatures, some 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 animals that if there's a limb that they lose, that limb can grow back. You see know what I'm saying? But not so with man. Why does man, the human being, having such divine potentiality and potential in him, why does it seem like he's disconnected, right? It seems like he's disconnected. What disconnected him, right, is the whole thing about the choice factor. People talk about the fall, right, the fall of man. You hear about the fall of man from some of the Christological Christian, you know, perspective of the, especially in the times of the Gentile, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant and the Christianities, we hear about the fall of man. Then we also hear about, well, the fall of Satan. Right? Didn't Satan fall? Some interpret Revelation to be bringing out that part of this ancient mythos. Right? Now, when we say mythos and say mythology, it's not to dismiss the reality. Oh, that's another vlog. Myth and reality myth plus reality equals the really real because what ones don't recognize is that the ancient mythology was primitive sociology right the sociology and as well as the psychology there's something very important right it's like when the scientists write formulas they use signs and formulas like symbols signs and symbols and formulas 
If you or me look at it, you and me won't understand it unless we have that scientific knowledge. It's like looking at the Hebrew perspective of the Bible and then hearing what seems to be endless, you know, disputes, debates about the King James Version, you know, and so-called counterfeit Christianity that's based on that version. That's why I have to say this, that is, is, is God, the God of the Bible and Satan one and the same? In the KJV, the King James, from the King James Western Gentile perspective, it would really seem so, right? You can be made to believe so. Yes, it's 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 believable, right? That's what we're going to call it. It's believable. It's believable, right? But is it so in reality? No, not in reality, but it's believable. See, everything is conditioned. If coming from the scriptural perspective, right? Everything is conditioned on what happened in the beginning, right? And it says, in the, it said, as it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the end. Well, what was it in the beginning? The beginning was a, a beginning. So in the end, after the end, it's a beginning. But people, they hear that and they think, well, everything that was there in the beginning is going to be the same exact thing in the end. Well, uh, it all depends on what you think the beginning was. What do you think the beginning was? Right. Because of at the end. Right. The end is the end. Right. It's like you watch a movie. Right. And you see it from the beginning and it gets to the end of the movie. Some people leave. You decide to get some more popcorn, you know, and something to drink. And then you come back in and, and the movie begins again. <laughs> right. Just use the movie as an example, not as, as a point of reference. So we have the fall of man and we have the fall of Satan. Hmm. Is man Satan? Is Satan man? In other words, is man Satan? We, we say, well, is the God of the Bible and Satan one and the same? But is man, is, okay, let's say like this, is fallen man, right? Now, now what do we mean by fall? We have to define these terms, fallen man. That's why I was saying that the brother's reasonment, some good points he made, very good points he made, but the error I say the error or the fault that I find is the anachronisticness, right? And some of the lack of paying attention to some details. You know, like when he said angels, when it says with the angel, with the angel that was with him in the mount. And then he took that by certain correspondence in his argument and, you know, his presentation to say that it wasn't Yahweh or Jehovah, the almighty supreme creator. It was actually an angel, almost the implication there that he didn't say it so much overtly, but the implication there, I'm sure if you push him, he probably would say it because the implication was that this angel was pretending to be the God, but it was only the angel. Now, here's what's very interesting. We'd like to put into the exhibit right here, you know, into the record, um, the Ethiopic Book of Jubilees. Right. Yes. The Ethiopic Book of Jubilees. Now, I know one who's pushing the Waspe, Waspe Bible shouldn't, you know, dismiss the Ethiopic Book of Jubilees because at least we have a chain of custody for what we're talking about. Not something that was written by somebody somewhat spiritual, but very clever that has some points to it. Like we say, we didn't we, this is not to go all in on the Waspe. You know, we look through it. Even the previous time, we caught a clip of um, Selah Shalom. He was reasoning on some things from the Waspe and looking at the Bible. And we had recalled that others had brought that to our attention. We looked at it then and we said, let's look at it again. There's some interesting things. Although, different conclusion, looking at the Waspe Bible, there's a different conclusion that we can come to the, from what we've heard others who promote the Waspe Bible. But here we like to insert into the record the uh, Metzhafe Kufale, referring to the Ethiopic name, Metzhafe Kufale. This should not sound like some foreign, strange thing unless this matrix, right, that, uh, that the God of this world, you see, there's a God of this world, right, you know, and when we say the world, what is the world? Are we talking about the earth, right? When we talk about the world, are we talking about the planet, we talk about the world, we're talking about the plane. When we talk about the world, are we talking about a plane of consciousness? Because most ones and ones are in the King James Version, you know, 400 year consciousness as regarding this Bible and even as regarding what they call Judaism and Christianity. 
most of what we know in the West has been filtered through the Anglo-Americans, the Gentiles, through the times of the Gentiles, the times of these other nation states. Because he made a big point to say, well, look what was happening with Moses. And Moses, he, he murdered that Egyptian and in 10. Good point there. You know, he argues a good point. That is a correct point. That Moses looked both ways. That does symbolize intent. But it brought to mind, what do you do, right? If you're a believer in the Waspy Bible, right? As say la shalom, the question I want to ask him, what about self-defense? So maybe that will come up in a reason. It says about no war, right? No fighting, but doing good and acts of good and righteousness. No punishment, all leave, all that. So what do we do? If you were being attacked, would you just turn the other cheek? You know, do you understand the turn the other cheek in the generalized way? You know, or do you see it specifically that this was to those who were called out of the world and vis-a-vis -vis one another? Because as charity begins at home. So when we interpret that verse about turn the other cheek, we say, one, you only have two cheeks. Right? When he says walk, if your brother wants you to go a mile with him, go two miles with him. You might go three or four. Does that mean that every day your brother gets up, you can't do what you need to do? You got to walk around with him? Does that mean that after you turn the other cheek and get smacked on the other cheek, you to keep turning the cheek or you keep getting beat up? Is that how you interpret? That's the Satan. That's the, that's the Diablos. That's the devil right there. Right? The devil right there. They said the devil's in the details, right? <laughs> the devil's in the details. So when he said and the angel with the angels, what he's doing with the angels, right? It says the dispensation of angels, this dispensation of messengers. Remember we showed you right here concerning messengers, right? Let's bring this up right here concerning messengers. You see what it says, an angel, right? So now in the King James Version, it's Western Gentiles, Anglo European, Anglo American world. Right, they they pulled a world. They've created a whole world, a whole paradigm, right? This whole paradigm. It's almost like a matrix, like a simulation has been created, right? And we're existing in this like 400, at least a 400 plus year box. Most ones, it's like that picture where the man is is on the earth and he sticks his head outside to see the stars. Right? Most ones can't see outside of it, even when they battle of the holy books, you know. Holy books, you, you're talking about the battle of the translations of the holy books, right? And as translations go, even with the King James Version, people can pull up a lot of other translations. And he did that in a couple of places, like the Job quote. The Job quote clearly says the sons of B'nai Elohim, the sons of Elohim. And he goes along with certain European and other scholars or ones who say that the angels of Elohim, right, are actually... Right, the angels of Elohim are actually, um, I mean, I mean, the 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 sons, the Bene Elohim in Job are actually angels. So there's many people who believe that that's angels. Well, then what does it mean in John chapter one, where it says, "But those who like believe on him and believe on his name, will he give the power to become the 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 children, or in the Hebrew sense, the sons, the Bene Elohim? What does it mean?" Does it mean that they will become angels? And if angels, angels, in what sense? Because if an angel is a messenger, we can show you places in the scripture where they play fast and loose in the translation. In the King James, even in the King James Version. We're not one of those Hebrews or Israelites that say the King James only. No, it's a stepping stone. But most of them are stumbling over the stepping stone and, and busting their proverbial lip, so to speak. Right. Because they they boast all this, whether King James a black man or not. You know, that's a whole other discussion right there. Right. And we just look at the facts and the evidence. So even some of the ones and ones when we say, yeah, it appears that he did have, we could say, quote, some blackness in him. And some of the claims of the Israelites are true. People say, well, but he was a homosexual. Well, did you have sex with him? I mean, do you know that? You know, because a lot of times one will say, yeah, 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 he, he, uh, I can't even say that. Not, I can't say that. You see about the will? I, I can say that, but I'm going to choose not to say that. He, he's a punk. I'm going to use the F-bomb, but we just use the word punk. You know what I mean? He's a punk to imply that he is, you know, a homosexual or something like that. And it's kind of amazing that people do that nowadays, you know, all things considered. 
you know, in this world that we're in. But they play fast and loose with the translation, right? When it says that Jacob sent messengers, right? Jacob is in Genesis. So Jacob sent messengers with this reunion with his brother Esau or Esau. He sent messengers, right? The word, the very same construction is the very same construction, Malachim, right? The very same construction. You know what I mean? <laughs> The very, you know, Malachim, right? The very same construction that is used for angels elsewhere. So over here in King James Version, they say angels. Over here, they say messenger. Or he sent a messenger, a messenger, a messenger, a messenger, a messenger, right? But over here, they'll say he sent angels. So it's when the translator thought that they could discern when this is so-called a heavenly thing. Right? Or whether it's an earthly thing. But where are we, people? We're on this earthly plane, right? Right? It's like the psalm that says, The heavens of the heavens are Yahuwah Eloheinu, right? He who be who he be, Judge Jehovah Eloheinu, our almighty power. Right? Could we not to have any of the powers, any Elohim Achrim? Another false point is the whole point about false gods. This is another vlog we got to follow up on. Remind me, Chabarim, about false gods. That what would you do or what would you say if I told you, well, there, according to the scripture, the scripture does not call these other gods or other people's gods, powers, right, ideologies or idols, if you please. It doesn't call them false gods. In fact, that phrase is almost never used in the Bible. It's never used. It's not even used in the translation. Right? I mean, we can do this right here. We can just come out of this for a moment and search false gods. Right? Let's just do that right here. Just, just, this is not the video, but that was a point as well. Right? A point to the point. So let's go false, right? False God. Right? False God. Right? Let's look up false God. Right? It says over here, there's seven verses. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Yadin. What's going to happen? First verse says, Now therefore swear to me here by God that thou will not deal falsely with me. No, nope, no false God there. Leviticus, and ye shall not swear by my name falsely. Neither neither shall thou profane the name of thy God, thy power. I be he who be who he be. No false God there. In transgressing and lying against Yahweh he, and departing from Eloheinu. This is what a lot of these, well, first of all, the loss in translation, right? And the translations, right, that we have, right? Over the years, they have created a certain frame of mind. For example, when we, when we think about angels, think about it. If you think about angels, you think about wings, some have wings and they flying down like wings on their back or something. You know what I mean? And it's kind of hard to escape that. But what if I told you that for the Hebrews, right, and the people prior to this matrix that we are in and seeking to come out of, that they never had this particular conception, right? They never had this particular conception. Right. Even if you go back to ancient Egypt and so forth and so on, those were not considered to be, quote, angels. Right. And even the use of the wings had a metaphoric and symbolic like logic that meant something different than they mean in this Western Gentile whitewashed culture. But it says departing from Eloheinu, speaking down pression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart. Words are falsehood. And a lot of these ones that are trying to say, oh, the Bible, the Bible, if they're trying to get to the very root, talking about the ancient Hebrews, then they know nothing about the truth. They are stuck in a simulation. They're stuck in the 1611 simulation. We're trying to show them the way out. Right here, Jeremiah 7 and 9, will ye steal, murder, and commit adultery, and swear falsely, and burn incense, ashes to Baal? And walk after other gods. That's the that's what it says. It says Elohim Acharim, gods that come after powers, ideologies that come after or other gods, other people gods whom ye y'all know not. 
So there's no false God there, right? In Jeremiah 43 and 2, it says, Then spake Azariah, Azariah, son of Hoshei, and Yohanan, son of Kareah, and all the proud men sang to Jeremiah, Jeremiah, thou speakest falsely. <laughs> Yahuwah Eloheinu, he who be who he be, our Elohim, hath not sent thee to say. Wait, wait, send thee to say? Send thee, the, the word here is shalach, another term that is connected with the idea of emissary ship or messenger ship, so forth and so on. I was saying this earlier to Isha Shali, I said Shali that I remember when I worked as a messenger, right? Bike messenger. I did bike but I did foot messenger too as well. But you know when I worked as a messenger, right? And and the boss would hand out messages, right? You know, like you know like things, you know, you go pick this up, deliver this here, you know you know, our, what we're supposed to do for the day, you know, or the beginning or at whatever time we checked into the office, right? But in the beginning of the day, that's how it was. And if one is going downtown, right, to the Wall Street area, I'm going uptown, right? We're going two different directions, two different, two different messengers, right? Two different messages, probably, and two different messengers, I just want to keep this in mind when we're talking about angels to get out of the spookism. That spookism that has been coupled with whatever truth can be discerned in the Bible, that is satanic. That is Satan right there. Right? Yes, we are talking about a spirit. Yahweh, Jehovah, he is the sovereign over all spirits. We say, well, why can't you send a good spirit? Because you made a choice, nigga. You made a choice. We all made a choice even through our ancestors because we still are making that choice and making these choices now, right? Now, once they ate of the fruit of the tree of knowledge and good, uh, good and evil, what should happen after that? Oh, now wake up, you know, let's close the book. See, people forget that everything that comes after, both in the testimony of the scriptures and also in our reality is based on the the physics you know the polarity the physics the whole choice factor right there right is based on that because humanity chose right even though they were commanded people say why did he command he could have moved the tree outside the garden somewhere else <laughs> see that shows you the rebellious spirit in ones and ones. He could just send send spirits, you know, send good spirits to make everybody happy and, and everything wonderful. Okay. So the, the the God of the Torah of the scripture that says that he is a man of war and there's a likeness to man. He created man in his own image after his likeness. See what they they like the diosophites. Not to get too deep in this, but the diosophites. That's like the Catholic Church. Some Christians believe that sometimes Yeshua, Jesus, right, was divine. Sometimes he was human. The true teaching, the true doctrine, is he is a testimony of Adam, right, of the original man, humanity before the fall. That he is both divine, or we could say he both has that heavenly, right, that divinity nature. Right, that God nature, in other words, that Ha'el, Ha'el nature, and he also has the human nature. And according to Tawahedo Creed, without confusion. This is where man was in the very beginning, right? At that level of his evolution, spiritual cycle, spiritual evolution, he was warned not to eat of this because of the consequences. Oh, why is he sending curses? He will send blessings, but if you don't want to listen to him, then he is sovereign, right, over all, or over all created beings. Even in the wise space scripture, we have the evil angels and the evil spirits, and they say the false gods falsely, you know, because the scripture doesn't speak about false gods. It speaks about other gods. See? 
See, you can't find one place. See, it's a little thing like that that was inserted. They call it like the Lucifer effect. Go look up um, Zimbardo. I think Zimbardo and the Lucifer effect. Go look that up. Get into that. Hopefully, we can follow up if the ones ask about that in, in the comments. What about this Lucifer effect thing? The Zimbardo, a psychologist, he discovered something about the human mind. That's what Ha Torah speaks to us. But in the King James Version, you can see it a little bit, but in the Hebrew, it becomes more clear. Yeah, right? The psychology. This is why most Yehudi, most Jews, you know, other Jews don't really argue when you want to say all that you want to say because they know you're stuck in a mistranslation, in a translation that has a lot of misses. Let's put it like that. I want to say the King James Version just overall is a mistranslation, but it's a translation that has a whole lot of misses. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about females, right, in that sense. In fact, it actually suppresses the divine feminine polarity of the helix in the translation. It actually suppresses that, right? But here you can see where it says the falsely, but it doesn't say false God, right? It says in 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 First Corinthians 15, 15, yea, and we are found false witnesses of Elohim because we have testified of Elohim that he raised up. Now, this is when Paul Rabbi Shaul is making his argument. You know, like, you know, like, like I'm making an argument. You're accusing me of something. So, so, okay, so yeah. So, so y'all have caught me in a lie, such and such. I'm saying all this because really y'all are the liars, right? I'm going to catch you. But I'm just, you know, I'm, 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 it's just like a turn the other cheek kind of a moment, right? That he raised up Moshia, whom he raised not up. Right? He says that if that's the case, then we're false. But he's also declaring on the record, like somebody accused you of something, right? And they're saying that what you said was wrong and you're just doubling down on it. He's doubling down. People say, oh, this is proof that Paul was false. Yo, Nucka's lack of reading comprehension. So when it's about Wooly Lynch, how to make a slave and make sure they don't comprehend their, their language and they have an imperfect comprehension of our language. So when you say, hey boy, get our crops, he won't think that our mean is, is his and, 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 and ours. You know, he'll know that ours mean ours, not his. But we tell him, get our crop, right? The our is us, right? If so be that the dead rise not. Right? And he told a lot about the resurrection. Resurrection was to be withheld right, from humanity right, for a set period so that man could get to know good and evil. <laughs> right? So when he said he concluded, he said, well, God, you know, the God and, and Satan is one and the same in one perspective. But, but in the next perspective, he's saying that the God of the Bible is really Satan and the waspy, the God of the waspy, right, is the real God. But really, you're confused with confusion because you're running past some first principles, right? First John 4 and 1, beloved, believe not every spirit, right? You see, before man, Adam, and Eve, but man was the one commanded. We, we put the blame on the man. That's why it says that the, that Yeshua, he is the last Adam, right? Don't talk about the last Eve. Yeah, she trespassed. She did trespass, but man was in the disobedience because he was the one told, right? If we put it into the scriptural, the metaphysics, take it to the next level. We're talking about the spirit, like that man has three, three brains, so to speak. Right? He has that reptile, the reptilian. That's the reptile, reptilian in your brain, right? The reptile, the reptilian, the instinctual drive, right? Some say the, the raw animal drive, right? Survivalist, all of that. Red, the red zone, right? Then we have the mammalian, mammalian. You know what the mammaries are? That's why it's connected with mammalian. That's that feminine, the feminine mind. It's part of our mind. See, the Hebrew scriptures show us the male and the female, while in the King James Version, they cover it up. They cover up the feminine with it. So in a sense, we can say the translation betrays a lot of the misogyny, right? The misogyny. But here it says, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits. What does it mean by try the spirit? Doki mazo. What's doki mazo means to test? In the Koine Coptic Greek, to test, to examine, to prove, to scrutinize whether a thing is genuine or not. So the discussion concerning the Bible, the WASP is good, right? But let's recognize as genuine after examination to prove, to deem worthy, right? Deem worthy. So as we mentioned, the actual text has a lot there. 
But it's like, I, I might talk about, or people might talk about the Bible. I've heard people talk about the Bible for years. I, I wasn't inspired. I was not. It was only Garmawi, you know, Nagus and Nagas, Garmawi, Hala Salah. I say that truly, really fully inspired I to seek the truth for myself. And I'm happy that I got that wise and wonderful counsel, right? To test literally or figuratively, right? I would say literally and figuratively. Because the letter of the law, right? The literally, that's the physical, that's the, you know, and then figuratively, the metaphysical, right? Or we have the earthly and the heavenly, so to speak, literal and figurative, by implication to approve, right? What is approvable, right? Whether they are of Elohim, because many false prophets are going out into the world. And there's this favorite verse that Sarnetta and others like to speak about when it says that he will put a lying spirit, right? He will put a lying spirit in the mouth of the prophets. Well, the better context there is a lying spirit in the mouth of the prophets that should have been about the true prophecy and the true word, but they had also made a, the choice factor. You know, it's a choice factor. You know, we can call it, um, um, you could call it like almost like karma in a sense, a divine the Hebrew karma. This is the verse here, 1 Kings 22, 22, and Yahweh said to him, right, wherewith, right, because one came forward and says, I'll go, right, I will go. But you think about this in a moment, if the creator is the creator, even in the Waspy Bible, right? The creator is the creator, right, of all, right? Similar to and basically based on the scripture, the Bible. It's just a kind of a revision, a kind of revisionist Bible that does point out some interesting and good commentary. But as far as being on the level of the true scripture, right, it is not. Right. And we can show and prove that. And he said, I will go forth and I will be right. What says a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. Who's his prophets? It's not talking about Jehovah's prophets. Right. But the prophets that were working to prophesy the lie. He said that the priests and the. The priests misinterpreted the commandments of God, right? Well, here you have certain ones that have their own prophets, right, who are running counter-prophecies. It's like what's going on in the conscious community, right? Everyone want to put down the scripture, put down the Hebrews, put down the Bible, put down the prophecy, and yet you're living it, right? And he said, thou shall persuade him, prevail also, go forth and do so. The point that I'd like to make right here is, let's see, the Lord of the right of the spirits of all flesh, right? You ever come across that right there, right? The spirits of all flesh, right? Let's go back here, right? The spirits of all flesh, right? Right here, Numbers twenty-seven sixteen, right? It says, "Let the Lord, let Yahweh, the Elohim." See, they don't understand God. They only understand God. Right in the goddamn Western Gentile translation, they don't understand it only in the Western Gentile mind sense of God. Yeah, you can go to the you know strong concordance, right? You can bring up Elohim, right? We can see what the some of the um definitions that some scholars have given, right? We can go down here to the root, right? Now, you see, false God is right there. Where is it? It's in the Browns Drivers Briggs definition, they put false God, right? They could say other gods. That's what the Bible in the translation, see how they lie on themselves even in the Bible, went through the seven verses not one verse there for false god right? and you can look at fake god too, there's not one verse there so that idea, it dismisses the reality, that idea creates a mythology a modern mythology because the reality is that even the other gods, the gods of the nations were never called false gods See, false imply like they don't really exist, but they really did exist. Even if they only exist in the in the hearts and minds of the believers, they existed. They existed. And they were a reality for those for whom it existed. Right? But what was given to Yasharala? What was given to Israel? See, one say, well, even the Israelites, so forth and so on. Right? That's why I want to ask the question. Since you say no war and, and only about love and good and righteousness, then that means that you don't believe in self-defense. 
right? I mean, let's talk real world. We're talking about real world. In the real world of the physics of positives and negatives, that's the consequences of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It didn't stop after Adam and Eve left the garden. No, it only began. And not just for them, but according to the Hebrew mythos, for all of us, for all humanity. It becomes the code. It's the key to the code to really understand and to properly discern. Because if I didn't know any better, I would listen to Selah Shalom's argument and say, man, he, he really made the point. If I didn't do my own due diligence. So right here, 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 you can go through all this. You can get to the root, right? And we can get to the root there. But what they're missing, right, is the linguistic, the linguistic science. Right? The Elohim, the powers, right? The power of the spirits of all flesh. So we have spirits. Who is the Lord of all spirits? Who's the creator of all? I think this is one place that we would agree, at least in name, right? It says, set a man over the congregation. Why? Because he made man in his image after his likeness, but allowing man to have will or what some call free will or the choice factor, man made the wrong choice and one has to suffer the consequences. It's like I'm I'm about to run out the house and run down the stairs and my mama or my papa or my brother or my sister, they say, tie your shoelaces. I say, no, I'll tie when I get downstairs. And then I run down there and I... Right? And I fall down the steps. Now, suppose while I'm falling down the steps, I reckon I'm going to fall. I say, oh, God, is God going to suspend me in mid-air, you know, right then, and then give me the option to tie my shoes? I mean, that would be, like, great. And somebody might take this, you know, give some credit, you know, date this right here. Somebody might put that in the commercial. That would be interesting. I haven't seen that in the commercial. Somebody's about to fall. They say, oh, God, and they, and, they, and they freeze, and then they tie their shoes, right? And then they continue and get their balance, you know? No. The consequences. It's like mama say, don't touch the stove. Since many ones say that the black woman or the woman is God or black woman is God. Well, what about this? Let's look at the mother. The mother is a God for humanity in, in maturity. Yes, she is. Or goddess, if you please. But she says, don't touch that stove. Right? It's hot. And you curious. <laughs> you don't know. You want to get the knowledge Right, of good and evil. So you go ahead and disobey what mama said and you touch that stove and ah! All right, okay. So your mama was wrong. Why did your mama move the stove into another room, a secure room that you could not access? You know, because her telling you don't touch the stove is not good enough. You see? So is something wrong in the mind state? That's what it says. They have lost the balance in their mind, in a sense. You know what I mean? They lost the balance in the mind. It's like saying, you know, the devil made me do it, you know? Or other people say, God made me do it. In that context, it's still the same devil. So yes, is the God and the devil in some ways in this fallen world system, it would be very believe, be lie evable, right? It's be lie evable. First Corinthians 5 and 5. To deliver such a one to Satan. Uh-oh, why are you going to do that? Why are you going to deliver such a one to Satan? Right? It's just like saying, call the Babylonian for those who fear and respect the Babylonian. I remember Rastaman said, he was dealing with another roster man, but the roster man didn't want to hear like the love and the goodwill, like 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 Aya, yes Aya, the other one that was acting mad. So the next brethren called the Babylon on him, and I said, "Bro, why you did that?" He says, "Call the Babylonian for the Babylonian, for the Babylonian." He's obviously he could not hear the spirit of of love and grace and bro, just easy. Let's just come make it with reason. No, he wanted to he wanted to bow up. Because, see, the other consequence of the next brethren was then he would have to probably get his hands bloody and do some unrighteousness. Ain't that right? Say la shalom. He would have to do that. So to call the Babylonian, like to call, deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. Right? There's a comma there, not a period, that the spirit may be saved in the day of Ha'adon Yeshua of the sovereign victory, the sovereign salvation, or in translation, the Lord Jesus. 
What do you think about that? that? That's bad, right? In the New Testament. Why are you going to deliver such a one to Satan? Well, let's put it into context right here. It says, it is reported commonly that there is fornication among you. Now, some of them would ask, and in the scriptural context, the fools would ask, why doesn't God send a spirit, you know, send a spirit, right, of, of not fornication? But then nobody asks, why did they not choose fornication? You know what I'm saying? You, you want to get your, you want to get your, you want to get it on, right? You want God now to stop you there. But as soon as you get it on and there's bad consequence, you're like, why didn't God stop me? Oh, you, you want to play God. You're the God of the world. You're the devil. Remember, in a sense, this is what happened in the Adams family from the very beginning. Right? These polarities. It's commonly reported that there is fornication among you and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles. What is Hawaria Rabbi Shaul saying here? He's saying that this kind of fornication, even the Gentiles, you don't hear them talking that people are doing this. What kind of fornication, fornication can this be? That one should have his father's wife. Oh, Chan. No, no, no. That sounds like what the Bible reports concerning, you know, the whole ham incident in the Bible. Doesn't it sound like that? Right? So the nakedness, right? So his father's nakedness. But then in the Torah it says the nakedness of the man, it's his wife. But here it says that that one should have his father's wife. So among these, we could say Christians or, or Nazarenes, these who are seeking to follow the way of, 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 of Jehovah's way, truth and life, of righteousness and doing good and love and, and that true Christian way, that true anointed way. There was one boy, right, who wanted, not wanted, he, he, did, he was doing it, you know, having his father's wife. Right. So Paul here writing a response to here, as is very Judaic, he says, and ye and y'all are puffed up and have not rather mourned that 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 he that have done this deed, who done this deed, who done that walk on his father's wife might be taken away from among you. Mm. Now, some fools will say, well, why couldn't another spirit be sent unto him? Yeah, okay, okay. It's like when you told that nigga, you told you told him stop and he wouldn't stop. Right? He said, Why can't you stop? Right? Why couldn't he stop? So is God there too? The drunk driver is driving drunk and and because they're driving drunk, they kill somebody. Somebody who was very beloved in the church and was doing wonderful and good deeds and everything like that. You know, you say this person was a good person. Why kill them? Why not kill the bad person? Aren't you now become a judge of evil thoughts? You said not to kill. I thought the real Christian ethic was this suffering that teaches us something. It's suffering that teaches us something. It's suffering that brings us into, into the divine relation as if we are emulating him. You know, if we say he is Yeshua, right? As they say, the Lord God Jesus, according to the scripture, right? So this one right here, Paul is saying, nah, you're going about this the wrong way. Because it was like peace and love in the church. You know, he doing a little fornication with his father's wife. And maybe his father wasn't a Christian. And it was like, well, you know, because he's not a Christian. You know, all kind of excuses. Instead of recognizing that this is the con, this is the, don't you know? Now, now you got to know something. I, I never witnessed this before. I, I can't believe I got to know that. Well, now you got to know good and evil. Isn't that what we could say we as humanity desired? For I verily, as absent in the body, but present in the spirit, he wasn't there. He said, I'm absent in the body. I'm present in the spirit, right? Have judged already. Uh-oh, he is judged. Thou should not judge, you fool. He didn't say thou should not judge that. No, he said, he said, thou should not condemn. You know the difference? You're judging, but you're not always judging against, always expecting the worst out of people, always condemn, always suspicious. You know they didn't do nothing wrong. You're waiting for something to go wrong. Mm. But he's judged already, righteous judgment, right? Not by, by parents, he says, right? Judged by, by righteousness, not by a parent. Didn't Yeshua sure say that elsewhere? So he said, look at this contradict. No, your mind is contradictory. Your mind, is, it might be that reptilian, 
maybe eating up the mammary, you know, and the higher brain, the ego has not landed as of yet. As though I were present concerning him that so that hath so done this deed. In the name of Adonenu Yeshua HaMushiach, in the name of our sovereign Yeshua the Messiah, when y'all are gathered together, that's the, that's the principle of church, right? Not the word, but the principle of what they call church, the gathering together. And Ruhi, my spirit, with the power, the what? The power of Adonenu Yeshua HaMushiach. To do what? To deliver such a one to Satan. So, so Satan has a role, even in the new covenant sense, right? Doesn't Satan have a role? To deliver such a one to Satan, to the adversary. For what? For the destruction of the flesh. Now, in the old covenant, the Brit Hayashana, before that way, truth, and life was revealed, you know what would have had to be done did to this one right here, right? You know, you know what would have had to be done, right? The Torah speaks about that. Right? You know, the Torah of Moshe, of Moshe, but here we're in the Torah of Yeshua, that the spirit may be saved. That what? The spirit, right? The spirit may be saved in the day of Ha'adon Yeshua. So just to point this out right here, you know, let's just point this out right here. Could we going to seal this up right here, probably pick up on, you know, a little bit more. You know, we saw this right here, the, yeah, the stunt man. Yeah, this is the part I want to share. I don't know if you've seen this movie. If God could do the tricks that we can do, he'd be a happy man. See, even the devil knows something that you don't know. And it seems like something that, well, God is just spirit, right? Well, it says God is spirit, but with God, the spirit created man in his uh, image. What's the image of God? Are we looking at the outer image? See, this is where the Hebrew comes in. Because from the English, you see image, and you think of image like a like an image, almost like an idol, an image, right? But the image is the ability to speak, is the word, right? Word fitly spoken is the word, right? Is to articulate logos, the logic, is to reason. Notice what these devils are doing. They're saying that if God could do the tricks that we can do, he'd be a happy man. <laughs> Remember I was talking about suffering, right? Suffering, right? See, the difference between whether this man is God or Satan is by the spirit, right? And one has to have a discerning spirit to be able to discern the truth, right? And sadly, most ones, they discern from a subjective perspective, right? In order to be objective about this thing called the Bible, Right, we have to get into the linguistics, the language. Right, any Yehudi out there who really studies, you know what we're talking about when we're talking about this. It's the language. Right, see, in the language, it'll prevent the shortcomings. Right, of a lot of these mistranslations. Right, the shortcomings of these mistranslations. Right, as well as reveal other aspects that was there in the original that did not get translated, right? That was lost in translation. Like when we look at in the beginning, right? That's how it says in beginning, right? In the Hebrew, bereshith, in beginning. But really, it's bereshith. Reshith, Shlomo HaMelech, Solomon. King Solomon tells us here in Proverbs 4 and 7 that wisdom, the divine feminine principle, right, with the Almighty, even before the beginning. Because by pointing out Reishith as beginning, it's pointing to the beginning, right, of the Almighty powers creating creation was in Chokmah, was in wisdom. But see, this also is suppressed, right? This is part of the misogyny of the translation, right? Because it's almost impossible to discern that in the King James Version, but it's very easy to discern that, right, in the Hebrew. Because once we got into Bereshith, right, you know, I, I mean, got into um, pro, Proverbs, Masha, right, and we read that, they would say, wait, it's saying, it's saying that Hakma is she. Solomon basically is the wisest man, but when he introduces the lesson to the class, he basically says, listen, I'm the dean of this college here, and now I'm going to bring forth the professor. 
my mother wisdom, Chokmah. She was the same one there that Elohim said, the man has become as one of us. Because in Proverbs, she explains the differences, right? The differences between the Tob, the good, the beneficial, and the Ra'a, the evil, the ill, the hurtful, the harmful, right? So in the beginning, so here, 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 in the beginning, Elohim in beginning, in wisdom, Hailehim, the almighty power, the powers, he, the powers, the powers is plural, but he is singularity. You heard about that in science, right? What do you think that comes into science? Right? The Yehudi scholars know that. A lot of things have come into science a little more clearly, right? If not through the invention of our black and brown people, all these inventions they created. But even there, we give credit to the Almighty, even as um, 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 Carver, you know, um, who's the brothers of Peanuts? Who's the brothers of Peanuts? Huh? Uh-uh. The George Washington Carver? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Pray to I, pray to I. I'm going a little long, but I'm going to seal up right here. The understanding, right? With wisdom, in wisdom, Bereshith. In wisdom, Ein Sof, right? Without end, Ein Sof is created, Bara. With wisdom, Ein Sof, Bara, right? Created understanding, Elohim. Right. So right here, 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 brothers and sisters, sisters and brothers, I'm going to seal up on this right here. But we're going to return to this and deal with another aspect of this. So in summary right here, Satan right, is the God of the Bible. Satan and Satan the same is the God of the Bible and Satan the same. In the KJV, King James Version, it is believable. It is believable. But in reality, it's not. That the real God, the power, the Hashem, Yahweh, Hei Hak, Adosh, Baruch, Hu, Baruch Hashem, He is over all creation because He is the creator of all creation. So if He chooses to withdraw His, his spirit, as He did with Shaul, right, and to permit, allow, or to send the evil spirit, like attract like. Right? That's why we are counseling one to do good, right? And to heed his commandment. It's clear that the Bene Yisrael, the children of Israel, did not. Right? And this is the thing that black men are wrestling with, you know, against the Bible, right? Because one don't want to take responsibility. You know, it's like what happened to Adam. Remember Adam? Adam, the woman was straightforward. The serpent beguiled me and I ate. Boom closed, open, and shut, right? The man, he said what? He said, the woman that you gave to be with me. So he already showed that he began to know evil from his own mind. He said that the woman, so he blamed Elohim, but Yahuwah Elohim, right? Yahuwah, he who be who he be, the almighty power. And he blamed, right, the woman, right? That before the fall, was responsible for helping bring a higher consciousness to him when he says that you are Isha because you came from Ish. That's a whole other level of the Hebrew linguistics there. Some of the Chabarim know. But anyway, right here, this is Yadin. This is Yadin, Ras Ayadonis, the far LOJ, the Lion of Judah, right? Society of His Majesty. Like, share, and subscribe. Shalom, Chabarim. Shalom. Also, check us out at lojs.org. You can hit up the contact there as well more directly. We'll check out the comments as we're able to, but also share the comments there and also sign up and subscribe for Rastafari Israelites, a live stream. We'd like to have some reasonments on that platform on some of these subject matters of interest. Shalom, Chabarim, Talmudim. Yes, sir. Yeshua Shalom.